so on my handout I've got the old way and the new way. The old way is still valuable for at the minimum to do a little reconnaissance on the competition, to do a little competitor analysis. What am I up against? Uh, my bakery didn't show up. So I found out why the other ones are. And notice that a lot of the slots are taken from review sites and such. That should be telling you, should make a note, that I need to get on these review sites, especially if I've got some goods or services. But just about every kind of company is going to end up on Yelp and some on more specialized sites. So now we will do the, the new way, the long tail keyword method. And I've got here, in a clean search engine, search for a long tail keyword from your niche. And then you do the same thing. For the first page, write the title and description, <laughs> click to see the results, write some notes. But I've got a, 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 a footnote here, right? Clean search engine. Down at the bottom, a clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and browsing history before using the search engine. This will give you more accurate results. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. If your main browser is Chrome, for example, use Firefox when you need to search. Each browser is different. You'll have to find out how you can reset yours. This is important to get results like how your potential visitors or customers would. So people come to this class often enough and they tell me, you know, I search, I, I thought I did the long tail keyword strategy, I'm searching for these keywords, and I, and I rank well. And then I go from my house to my friend's house, and when I search on my friend's house, I'm not on number one page anymore. What's going on? Well, what's going on is that the search engine is giving you false results. Your search engine on your computer is giving you false results. Now, the search engine is not trying to trick you. It's trying to help you. We use search engines so much nowadays, Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, whatever. We're online. We're on websites so much. These search engine, this software to browse a, a search, to browse a website, the web browsers are more and more complex and they remember more about you to help you. I visit a bank all the time. I visit this blog all the time. And so as soon as I start typing, you know, a certain website, it already knows, oh, you mean that website, that bank. You do this kind of search over and over. So you know, you do a search over and over and it starts to remember these things. And therefore, when you're doing research for yourself, you're also feeding it this history of what you've searched. So cleaning out the cookies, resetting the browser, whatever technique is what I'm saying here for the second way to search. We've been using, I've been using Google Chrome at least, to do all of these searches. It's been building a history. I've got a history of everything that I've been searching for today right here. And you have too. So to get the best results, I would need to find out how, and you need to do it. I, I don't really mention it in the class. You need to find out how, when your browser, where do I delete the cookies? Where do I delete the cache? Where do I clean it out so that I can start over to reset it? Now, big caveat there. We use these web browsers for a lot. I have my web browser, Firefox, let's say I click Facebook, I'm automatically logged in to see my friends and family's things. I go to my bank, it automatically remembers my password, I log in, I see my bank account. Great, it's a time saver for me. If I'm asking you to clean out your browser, you're going to lose all of that. You're going to have to log in again to Facebook, log into your bank. And unfortunately, a lot of people rely so much on it doing it for you that you don't remember your own password. So, instead of cleaning out the the cookies and, and the passwords of everything of the browser that you use all the time, download another browser. They're all free. You may use Safari all day long. That's fine. Go download for free Firefox or Opera or whatever. If you're on Windows and you use Firefox all day long, go download Chrome. Go use Internet Explorer. Use any other browser than the one you usually use for your day-to-day -day stuff. And then it won't matter when you go to the settings and click Reset or Clear Cookies or whatever. There's nothing important there that's going to be lost on that other browser. People then sometimes ask, well, what about using incognito mode or private mode or whatever the browser calls it? That has a value, but that doesn't negate the fact of the history 
that you've that you've put into it. If I constantly visit the website, you know, the Internet Movie Database, I visit Internet Movie Database all the time because I'm, I like to keep up to date with, you know, the latest movies. And then I switch over to private browsing, or they call it incognito mode here, and I want to go to Internet Movie Database, it already knows I want Internet Movie Database. So that private mode will only work from now on. So the best scenario is to use an alternative web browser than the one you usually use. Learn how to reset it, to clean it all out. And then, extra layer, go into private mode. That way it's still not going to save anything. It won't have any history to fall back on. And now when you do your competitor analysis and keyword, long tail keyword strategy searches, you will have a clean search engine. Just like your clients trying to find you. They are searching these words for the first time unlike you who have searched it many times. So that's what I'm saying about that section. So let's say I did, I've been using Firefox all day. I'm gonna go to Chrome, uh, I'm sorry, I've been using Chrome all day. I'm gonna go to Firefox. And I don't know how to use it, but I'm gonna click on menu items and maybe figure it out. Oh, I click here, private window, okay. I'm going to go over to options, maybe, find out how to clear the cookies. You need to educate yourself on that. Find out how to reset the browser, go to private mode. They might call it incognito mode, in private mode. And now when I go to Bing or Google and do the long tail keyword, which is um, authentic bakery, oh, let's try like this. Um, healthy bakery in San Diego. Healthy bakery in San Diego. So this is the long tail keyword. It doesn't have to literally be a really long phrase, but whatever specifics that you can feed to the search engine to do these um, to do these searches is better than the generic simply bakery. And I would then do the same thing. Copy and paste a few of these results, click on a few of them, see what's good, see what's bad. So a Yelp result. Skip that. Sweet Cheeks Baking Company. Healthful baked goods. Please note we are not a storefront bakery but love to see clients by appointment. Cage free local chicken eggs, etc. Well, let me go ahead and select that. Copy that, paste it into my notes, because I've got a new section now. I've got a section here that I can mark as generic keywords, and then I'll create another section down here, long tail keywords. which I went with Healthy Bakery in San Diego. And I would do the same thing, get as many of these results as I, as I can. So I'm seeing Sweet Cheeks Baking Company, I'm seeing the word baking instead of bakery or baker. Again, to show you that you don't have to worry about variations. Baked goods, and they use the word healthful, which is technically correct and healthy. Everyone says it wrong. It's not really healthy, it's healthful. But it knows that, and then the, the web address is Sweet Cheeks Baking, and then the description, they, have to, they must have gotten so many inquiries about where are you on Main Street, that they had to say their own description. We're not a storefront, but you can make an appointment. You talk about the keywords organic and local and whole wheat. So I'm seeing these keywords. I want to get found. I think people are going to search for me for healthy bakeries. But I'm seeing results and I'm seeing gui being guided toward mentioning organic, mentioning local, mentioning these buzzwords that people are searching for and people are getting found by. My, you know, my competitors are getting found by those words that I'm not. Wholesale desserts locally for San Diego. So I'm seeing the word local. 
I'll write uh, keywords to consider. Local, I didn't think about that one. For some reason, I didn't think about organic. Healthful. Later on in the course, we're building these keywords. What do we do with them? Later on, uh, we will address adding them to the site. This, again, is if you don't have a site, just follow along. If you do have a site, we need your login information. If you have, I'm going to be focusing on using WordPress. If you have a different kind of site, these things should still work. You just have to figure out on your site what's the screen that you need to type this into. But I'm going to show a WordPress site and how to add it on a WordPress site. Because we're going to compile this list. It could be, you know, three, four, five, a dozen keywords. That's fine. We're not going to focus on one keyword and, and then stuff it all over our site. That's the old way. That's black hat. We're going to use white hat, which is we're going to develop five phrases, six or seven short keywords. We're going to use them throughout our site. And that uh, increases our authority because we have more content. And the longer I do it, my longevity. Let's see, Sweet Cheeks, Facebook, 10 Best, Find Me, Glutenfree.com. Hmm, that might be someplace I never heard of, but I might want to get in there. Can I get on this Gluten Free Bakeries in San Diego listing? This is what I'm saying. SEM, what are you doing besides your website? Are you you have a website, but do you know you probably also have a Google review site without even knowing it? You need to go in and research. How do I get a Google review page? It's tied to Google Plus. In the social media class, we talk about Google Plus this Friday. And I want, guess what? I want to get reviews from Google, and those are also owned by Google, and therefore Google will show that perhaps more prominently than Yelp reviews. That's exactly what happened here. Look at this big, beautiful, prominent review from a Google property rather than a Yelp property. Yelp is there, but look at how nice that looks. I want to look like that. Google Plus profile for free. We talk about it this Friday. And so therefore you've got a business and people keep telling you what a great business. Are you asking them to then give you a review on Yelp, on Google Plus, etc.? They'll say, I never heard of Google Plus. Well, you're going to have a little flyer or something, some way to, for them to take or put it in the box when they take the cupcakes home. Don't forget to review us on Yelp. Don't forget to use real-world things to also affect digital things. It all relates. Put a, you know, a sign on your wall in the restaurant while people are waiting to get seated. Don't forget to review us on Yelp. Maybe if you give someone a receipt after they've paid and they love your product at the bottom, don't forget to give us a Google review and a link to it. Maybe a QR code. So happycow.net. That seems to be like a review site. Purecupcakes.com. This might be a result here. Next, oh, there's extraordinarydesserts.com. Babycakes.sandiego.com. Again, I would copy these, paste them. So Extraordinary Desserts, that's a really big name in desserts in San Diego, but they're not number one. They're way up, they're a few spots down. They have not updated their site recently. They might have the best cupcakes, but they don't have that call-out box. They're below purecupcakes.com. So longevity, authority, content, content updated on a regular basis. That's what this activity is here. And then you're going to write, after reconnaissance, you're going to write 10 simple keywords that define your site and five complete phrases, your long tail. By researching your competition, you are seeing what has worked for them. You are defining what sets you apart and what you have to offer in contrast to your competition. You will use your long tail keywords throughout your site, but you will also create content that fits the overall theme of your site. You will become an authority in the field you've targeted. You will create con uh, 
you will create content on a regular basis and you will spread this content throughout the internet. Check out that first chapter of the book, which I will excerpt a little bit next time. And I will unpackage all of these dense things on further days. But we are researching competition, developing keywords, we apply them to the site, we're creating content, uh, blogging for example. Maybe you sell a very esoteric product and you think people are going to search for what is X. So what if you had a blog post titled what is X? And when someone searches that, your blog post could show up. Maybe not the home page, but your site shows up traffic to your site. It's a big process. We've got three weeks to talk about it. It's an ever-expanding concept. I'll also be showing you other handouts and books and websites and such. Um, I want to wrap up the main lecture in just a moment, and we'll have a little lab time. We'll wrap up the day at 4 o'clock, and then we'll do it again next week. So any general questions up to this point? Um, this, yes? Um, <clears throat> The search engine can't read text on images, but what about facial recognition? Why can they do that and still not read text? Well, to some degree, even facial recognition is not that smart. If I feed it a picture of myself and it has no prior records of me, it won't know that it's me. If I feed it a picture of my family reunion, it's not going to know Uncle Bob. He has no history that the search engines can understand. If I feed it a picture of the Mona Lisa, it has millions of pictures of the Mona Lisa to go by to properly recognize that. So that's why plain text is preferable. These search engines are going to get smarter, and eventually what I'm saying now will be a moot, a moot point. But you might as well create content that, the search, that for the search engines is easiest to deal with now, instead of waiting for the technology to catch up for it to be able to process it. So is image reading, image readability quickly evolving? It is. Um, you know, I don't keep up to date as much to give you very deep answers on it, but I do see they're always having these articles about how it's the breakthrough that now we can tell many more things about this image. Microsoft is playing around with this fun website. I, I forget its name. It might be called like tellmemyage.com or something. Uh, where you give it a picture, how old, here it is, how old.net. What you do is you take a photo of yourself and the algorithm will tell you, uh, will try to guess how old you are based on these various features of, of, um, of you know, technology that it... This Facebook has been suggesting lately you want to tag so-and-so and they'll identify who it is in the picture, even though there's no tag on there. But that's within Facebook. Can Google do that? Can you go like, um, I mean, I know you can search a name, search images for a person, but that's when it's associated with some text. They have the ability now simply by the look of the face in the image. That's because there's such a huge database of people uploading selfies and all of that. Uh, you know, people taking these photos or f friends and family. Maybe I uploaded a photo of my aunt who is not on Facebook, but I tagged her. Facebook didn't know her, so I tagged her as, as Aunt, aunt Janet. And then eventually when she gets on Facebook, it's pressured into it, it'll already know a little bit about her because there's some data in Facebook. So basically the more data these things collect, the more smart they are. And on the one hand, that's, you know, scary. And on the other hand, it's useful for us as a business. Yes. I think also, um, I know when I'm updating my website and optimizing it, there is something for you to you can go, you have to go in and write a description mm -hmm. of that photo for that very reason, but also for people who are blind and depend on um, uh, not reading the picture, not seeing the picture, but they use the description of the picture. And that's also optimized to Google as well. So that concept there is um, that not only do we want to create websites for people that, ha that have visual ability, there are millions of people globally, hundreds of millions of people that use websites that are completely blind. 
you might think, how can a person that is blind use such a visual medium? We'll get into it into detail later, but basically they have a computer or software that will read to them what's on the screen. And so if it runs across a picture, it can't read a picture. It'll say, picture, unless we take extra steps to mark it with a description, which we'll talk about later. So then that's why we want to think about what, what's the most accurate way that we can convey our content, and really it's text. I'm not saying don't put pictures on your website. I'm just saying we have to do it smartly, which we'll talk about in detail as time goes on. Another question, maybe? Alright, so that's it for the moment. We'll have some lab time until 4. If you need some individual help, call me over. Make sure you've registered for the class. Don't forget your printout, and we'll do it again next time.